Hi everyone, this is Stefan again with another microscopy video. Uh, in this case, I want to look at some meiotic cells. And again, we'll be looking at plant meiosis in this case. And specifically, the plant we'll be looking at is lilies. So what you're looking at right now is a cross section through a flower bud. So out here, you have the petals on the outside of the flower bud. Okay, so you can see the petals, the cross section. And on the inside, you have these structures. Around the outside, you have anthers. And this is where we're going to be looking for meiosis. Okay, so this structure here that I'm outlining right now, this is an anther. And so in th within the anther, you have four chambers called locules. So this is a, one of these locules. Here's another locule. Here's another locule, and here's another lock. Here's another locule. Now, these locules contain meiotic cells called microsporocytes. Now, around the outside of these circular structures are supporting cells called the petal cells. We're not going to be looking at those, uh, so we're going to be focusing on the round, kind of detached-looking cells that are found in the middle of these. Okay, so. Now, one thing to remember about meiosis, or to understand about meiosis, is that the most important part of meiosis actually happens during prophase one. Prophase one is the most difficult and the most dangerous part of this whole process for a cell, um, because that's where um, crossing over happens, reciprocal genetic exchange. And so, um, during prophase one, what has to happen is that the chromosomes have to pair, then they have to align, then they have to synapse, and once they have synapsed, they will exchange information. So they will do reciprocal genetic exchange. Okay? And then after that, they can go ahead and continue into dividing the chromosomes between the daughter cells. But really, the, the key of meiosis is really this part here. It happens during prophase one, where that reciprocal genetic exchange occurs. It's a very scary thing for a cell to do because the cell is going to be breaking its DNA, double-strand breaks, so both sides of that DNA molecule are going to be broken and then reattached someplace else. And so there is a possibility of making a mistake here and of things just kind of falling away, of losing parts of a chromosome, which could be a very, very serious problem, could be a lethal mutation in the end. So cells want to try to avoid this as much as possible, which is why they're very, very careful with this part of the process. And this is why prophase 1 of meiosis takes the longest of all of the phases. And so when you are looking at any slides of meiosis, chances are very good that you will see a lot of prophase 1. And then after that, things move along very quickly because it's just a mechanical process of, of dividing up the chromosomes. Um, but prophase 1 tends to be very, very common on meiosis slides. And beyond that, quite often, you will see a few of the other stages, but you may not see all of them. So that's one of the things that you'll see in this video. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to go to a higher magnification. So I've started off at 40x, object, uh, at 40x total magnification. I'm going to switch over to 100. As so you can see, a little bit more of the anther itself. And again, we're going to be looking at one of these locules. So one of these, we're going to focus in on oops, one of these locules. I'm going to put that in the center. I'm going to move to the higher magnification again, 400x. And so we're starting to see some detail here. And so what we can see here are these rounded cells. These are the microsporocytes. And so these rounded green cells, inside you have um, a nucleus, which looks fairly pale in this case, and the chromosomes kind of look like pink or red color. And so what we're seeing here that all of these cells basically look the same. Let me just go to higher magnification so you can see a little bit more detail here. <coughs> And so what you're seeing here, again, is if I look at one of these cells, you can see relatively thick strands. Now, it might seem thin to you, but they're actually fairly thick uh, in reality compared to what they used to be. And this is a fairly late stage of prophase 1. This is likely to be pacotine or diplotene. Uh, they're not fully condensed yet, so we don't see the fully condensed short chromosomes yet in this case, but we are getting to that point. So crossing over has likely happened at this point, and so the, the chromosomes are almost fully condensed at this point. 
um, again, prophase and any of these stages really is a continuum. So uh, they would have started out just like with mitosis. They would have started with initially just kind of a granular appearance to the nucleus. And then over time what happens is that the uh, chromatin condenses and you end up start, uh, you start to see thin strands that are basically the condensing chromosomes but it, the nucleus still looks quite full and then over time we start to get to a point like this where you see fewer less and less material inside the nucleus uh, because it's getting more and more condensed and so the thickness of the chromosome increases here that's what you're seeing in this case let me go back out to 400x <coughs> excuse me okay let's switch over to a different locule so Again, notice that all the, the cells here are pretty much at the same stage. All the microsporocytes are at late prophase 1. Let's switch over to another locule over here. And again, notice they don't really look that much different. So let me just kind of zoom in again just so you get a better view of this. Again, you can see fairly thick chromosomes, but there's also a lot of empty space in this nucleus. Um, there's really not that much else in terms of any kind of features in here. So again, we're looking at prophase one, and that's a fairly late prophase one, okay? Let me, again, go back out to 400x so I can see a little bit more of what I'm looking at, okay? And let's see if we can switch over to another locule, and again, same thing. So again, like I said, when you are looking at meiosis, quite often what we see is all these cells are synchronized, and we're gonna be seeing a lot of prophase one of meiosis. So in this case here on this slide, really all we're seeing is prophase one. So I'm going to switch over to a different slide. So let me just get back out to low magnification to my scanning lens and pop in a different slide. And we're going to try to look at some more later stages. Okay, so again, we're looking at a flower bud and cross section. This one's a little bit later in development, so probably a couple of days older maybe. Um, not much more than that, really. <clears throat> so what you're seeing here is, again, anthers with the locules, and the locules inside have some of these microsporocytes. Okay, so again, another molecule here. So let's kind of take a look at, uh, let's take a look at this one maybe here. I put that into the middle and we'll zoom in on this one. So let's go to 100x. Focus. 400x. Focus again. And so what we're seeing here already is something that looks a little bit different than what we just saw. Okay. And so let me get to 100x and try to explore what we're seeing here. So 1,000x in this case, 100x objective. So what we're seeing is a fairly condensed nucleus here, a fairly uncondensed nucleus here. If we're looking at this one, you actually see that there's in fact probably two nuclei here. Okay, So we're looking actually at still a phase one. And so in this case here, what we're seeing is still that the chromosomes are highly condensed. So in this case here, you're seeing one of the two cells, one of the two daughter cells. Again, remember, you're looking at three-dimensional things in two dimensions. So the cells are three-dimensional, but you're seeing a section, and so you might be missing some of that information here. So again, you're seeing one of the two cells, the two daughter cells, and this one here, you can see that the nucleus is fairly condensed. It's very intensely staining, okay? So the chromosomes are still condensed. But if you're looking at some of the neighboring cells, this one, for example, the, those chromosomes have already uncondensed and you have a normal looking nucleus. And the reason I think this is still a phase is because we have this one condensed nucleus here, but also because if I look at this, I actually see two cells here. There's a fairly obvious nucleus here that's in focus right now. And there's another one that's just a little out of the plane of suction. I see kind of evidence that there's a nucleus probably right here. It just is a little bit out of the plane of section, so we just kind of cut the edge of it there. So in fact, two cells that are attached to one another still, and there's probably gonna be a cell wall somewhere in between them that will be formed. Again, if you look at this one over here as well, there's a nucleus here. It's becoming into focus here. 
and if I move over to this end there's going to also be a nucleus there again it's not fully visible here but there are in fact two nuclei occupying this space so you're looking at telophase one okay let me get back out to low magnification so I can see where I'm going next and I'm going to go over to a different locule let's go into this one over here <coughs> we'll zoom in on this one and so we'll see again something a little bit different than what we just saw okay so let's go to a higher mag magnification again and look at some more detail here and so here you can see we have more of these nuclei that we were just looking at, this very condensed nucleus. So again, we're looking at the Tila phase. You've got the two nuclei here at opposite poles. Um, again, here again, you can see very clearly you've got this cell here has two nuclei at opposite poles. So we're looking at definitely Tila phase. Question is which Tila phase, right? So what I'm seeing here are actually four, nu three nuclei in one area. So I am inclined to think that we're looking at Tila phase two in this case. Uh, if we scan down here though, we can actually see something a little bit different. Okay, so in this case here, you're seeing actually the end of anaphase. So we're actually seeing kind of in one locule two stages showing up. We have anaphase and telophase showing up. Again, I did say that they were synchronized, but not necessarily completely synchronized. So again, telophase and anaphase are very quick things that happen, and so you are likely to catch both of them in one area, whereas with prophase, because it's such a prolonged process, uh, it's very unlikely we'll see something along with prophase. Also, in terms of synchronization, it's very unlikely that you're going to see anaphase and telophase and prophase on the same slide because they're just too far apart. So you might see two of the three stages, but you won't see four stages or three stages together. Uh, they're just to, there's just too much of a time difference between them. Okay, So, again, if I look over here at this cell, again, I'm looking at dividing. You can, I can still see chromosomes here kind of pointing towards the center, so we're looking at anaphase here. And down here, definitely looking at anaphase. Here, definitely I'm seeing evidence of anaphase. These chromosomes being divided. This is probably looking at it from above. Again, look. remember you're looking at three-dimensional things. Again, the reason I think this is likely to be the second meiosis, so meiosis 2, so it's likely to be anaphase 2 or telophase 2 in this case, so I guess a combination of the two, is that here, for example, we have two neighboring cells. These are very closely associated with one another. Whoops, over here. Okay. And you can see a nucleus on one side of this cell, the other pole doesn't seem to show one yet because, again, we're looking at a three-dimensional structure in two dimensions, and that second nucleus has been cut away. And then its partner from the previous division is right here. And again, there's a nucleus on one side, on one pole of the cell, and the other pole is missing in this particular section. So again, it's very unlikely that you're going to get telophase 2 and telophase 1 on the same section or in the same region of that slide. So this is why I think this whole area is likely to be uh, a, sec uh, a section that contains telophase 2 and anaphase 2 and not just a whole mixture of different things. Uh, let me just again zoom out again and go to a different locule. See what we can find. Let's say maybe over here. Let's zoom in again. And okay, here we go. Let's go to 1000x. And again, right here, I can tell you from this, we're looking at telophase 2. We're seeing three nuclei out of the four. So right there, we're looking at one, whoops, two, and three. We're just missing one from that section, okay? Uh, again, we're seeing two cells. There's one over here with a nucleus visible or chromosomes condensed at the end. And there's the other half. So that's the partner from the previous division. This one's kind of interesting. You actually have two partner cells, so two sister cells associated with one another. One of the sister cells is still finishing up anaphase with its partner, which is out of the plane of focus here, out of the section. 
And the other one's already completed anaphase and it's already in telophase. And its partner, again, is not visible in this section, so it's kind of a, a fun one to look at. And again, this is definitely meiosis too. And again, we have here another slide showing us some anaphase, so we can again, clearly see these separating chromosomes. And again, another telophase over here, so we have two nuclei on opposite ends of the cell. Okay, so again, this is meiosis. Again, we're looking at more synchronized cells. They're all kind of doing the same thing at the same time. Again, you might have a little bit of overlap between different um, different stages, but they are going to be neighboring stages. So again, if we're looking at telophase two, we're likely to be doing it. Looking at anaphase two as well. Uh, if we're looking at telophase one, then we might see anaphase one as well. Okay, so I hope this has been helpful, and um, I'll see you in another video.